So I'm going to go to MATLAB. And uh, uh, there is a function I wrote called a convection diffusion equation. Okay. And if I call it, uh, it has two arguments. One argument is this U. Uh, what did I do? One argument is this U, the capital U, and another argument is this kappa. So let's first uh, concentrate on the first term. Let's give it uh, a, a non-zero U, but a zero kappa, so that we only have a equation with the first term. And we also pick F to be zero, so that we only see the effect of the, the first term, so the U term. For example, what kind of U would you like me to choose? Why don't we just start with one, all right, and set copper to zero. All right, so what this gives me is a blank canvas for me to draw what we call an initial condition. So the initial condition for a partial differential equation like this is the function C as a function of space only for time equal to zero. So in a lot of partial differential equations, in order for me to solve the differential equation, I need the initial condition. A way for me to think about this is think about uh, the weather forecast. The weather forecast is solving some equation like this, slightly more complicated, right, to see what the solution is in the future, three days ahead. I think it's going to be snowing. And uh, for the weather forecast to be able to solve these equations, you need an initial condition, which is the weather right now. That's why we have to have a lot of observation stations, weather satellites. These are basically measuring my initial condition by C at t equal to zero for all x. So basically that's what I need to even start solving this differential equation. Now for this equation, okay, can somebody come up and draw an initial condition you would like to see how the solution would evolve as time goes on? Please. Okay, you are late, please. Um, what is the equation? So, uh, here is the equation we are solving. And uh, here we just uh, chose a u, big u equal to 1, kappa equal to 0. What I'd like you to do is, I'd like you to draw the initial condition for this equation. Just the arbitrary initial condition you'd like. And we can see how the solution goes. This one? C as a function of x, right? C as a function of t and x? Just the x, so for okay. t equal to zero. Can you go back to the screen where you can draw? Okay. I tell you, just the draw from left to right in one stroke. So start from here and uh, just okay. keep it, keep going towards the right. Okay, let's look at this. This one, zero. One. Yeah, you can just uh, draw any arbitrary function of x. Okay, so... Um, Draw it like this. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Oh. So, okay. So that, uh, you can see the time is evolving, right? So that's the solution. U as a function of x for different t, right? So what do you see as the behavior of this solution? Just a yeah, so you just to see the a, a fixed function being translated as time goes on, right? And uh, what do you think is the speed of the translation? One. It's about one, right? Okay, so that is the behavior of this term. So basically, if you have a term that is proportional to the first derivative of the unknown solution with respect to x, what you get is like a translation in space. This term is what we call an advection term. Oops, what happens? Ah. This term is what we call advection. Right, because it just uh, translates things towards the right if u is positive. If u is negative, 
let's say, oh, what negative view do you want me to choose? Minus two. Can you come up and draw initial condition for minus two? And we'll see how things goes. Alright, a pretty oscillatory initial condition. So for minus two, we'll see that uh, uh, the solution, instead of translating towards the right, which is a positive velocity in this definition, we are translating towards the left, which is a negative velocity. And the speed of the translation is negative two. For every time unit, the wave goes towards the left for a length of two. Alright, so that's the first order spatial derivative term. Are right, any questions about that? Yeah. Will it always be periodic? Will it always be periodic? That's a very good question. So if it's periodic or not depends on something other than what we prescribed as initial condition. It's something called the boundary condition. So here we without telling you I enforced a periodic boundary condition. So that means whatever wave that goes towards the out of the left hand side would come back from the right. Whatever wave that goes out from the right is going to come back from the left. All right. So periodic boundary condition for example is used uh, if you do weather forecast or climate modeling because the earth is periodic. Right. But for most uh, aerospace engineering problems there is usually no periodic boundary conditions. Except for if you want to model an airfoil, which is essentially an infinitely long wing, then you actually put periodic boundary conditions on the spanwise direction. Right? So that's the uh, that's one of the places you put periodic boundary condition. Another place to use periodic boundary condition aerospace engineering is on rotating uh, propellers or turbo machinery where you have multiple identical blades running in identical configurations. Here, instead of modeling the whole circle, you would just pick one blade and use periodic boundary conditions to reduce the computation cost. But there are many other type of boundary conditions we can discuss later. All right, any other questions on the advection term?